talks about empathy and attentive listening, and that's the part in society that sometimes we use. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we're always like blaming. It's always like their fault. Instead, saying I'm feeling this, just how you pointed it out, mm -hmm. it has some similar qualities to it. It does. Matter of fact, there was a member in my group that uh, introduced me to. Yeah, that it's good work. Yeah. I took some classes. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm hoping to get FPS on that level. <laughs> <laughs> But I wanted to piggyback on what you were saying about the anger. And uh, I was in a personal situation with a young lady where we, she and I were going back and forth talking. She had just gotten off from work, and we'd been seeing each other dating for a while, and she had just gotten off from work. And I sort of uh, made a comment about introducing FPS to some of her families and things like that. And then all of a sudden, the text conversation just went south. And I'm like, what just happened just now? And I think I must have said something the wrong way where I did not empathize with her in terms of her day at work because she works at uh, Lowe's and she had a, about maybe a rough day at work. Uh, but rather than tell me that she was annoyed about something that I had said, she just went and blasted me. Uh, you don't care about me. It's all about you. Uh, it's all about you know so much of the you state. She did not in that moment own what how she felt. She just went what you were saying earlier about you know you you you. And to me, you know, it was like how do I how do you address something like that? And you know, most of the time. It's not easy because you know the person is frustrated and at the same time in my work what I try to do is get the person to own that frustration but what you're saying they will not do it. That is so hard. It's so hard and, I, and, and I'm still trying to, you know, I, I tell people about this concept but you know the, the letters and the way they are situated, you know, it sounds simple enough. Oh, I just say my feeling and then describe the problem and the solution. Dr. Gordon is probably the only one who was probably gifted enough to, <laughs> to get that like that and, and run with it. <laughs> yeah, smarter but, than I am. <laughs> um, but uh, owning that emotion is very, very difficult for us. And, uh, you know, we, 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 like I said, we have a good understanding of the problem. And we know, oftentimes know how to resolve it with the solution, but leaving out the emotion is very, very difficult. And I, I'm still trying to assess why, but going back to the nonviolent uh, communication, that's precisely what it does. You know, it gets the person to hone in on that emotion, accept it as their own, and, and being able to uh, find the courage to share it. You know, and I think that's, that's, that's when a light bulb moment happened for me when I first uh, put this together uh, after that uh, conflict resolution course, because that I statement, I was like, man, I didn't mean to say I can own what I feel and then say it. And what, what, what was the opener for me was I was a, uh, I, used, I used to work at uh, Red Lobster before, back in my uh, previous life. And uh, there was this coworker who always used to give me a hard time. And uh, he's part of why I'm in therapy now, but don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working through that. <laughs> uh, but he used to give me a hard time. And I never felt comfortable enough to go and say anything to him about what I felt. But after that conflict resolution course, and it, you know the I statement that I learned it, I, I, I put something together where I owned what I felt I went up to the guy and I expressed my feeling on the thing, on the situation. And after that, it was like such a relief. You know, it was just like, ah, like a breath of fresh air. Like I, I got that off my chest, regardless of what was going to happen, you know. And at the end of the day, it was a surprise to me that he had a, a good response to what I said to him. And I was like, oh. That I statement with the way I structured it actually worked, you know. Because at the time I'm thinking I'm going to make him more upset, and he's probably going to, you know, he's in charge. He's going to fire me or whatever the case may be. But uh, after that day, it was like we had a, a level of respect for each other that was that I admired, 
And I noticed that after that day that I uh, said my piece about it, and it worked out. And so, I ever since that day, that that is what has helped me create this project and put it all together. And uh, let's see what else we got in here. In the interest of time, we're here till what time, Michael? So we just have to wrap before five. Before, okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Do, do, do. Let's go to page twenty. There's some assignment discussions in there. Now the workbook that you guys are holding, don't get excited. <laughs> you guys are not allowed to keep them. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, these are workbooks that I use for uh, clients that I work with. In, uh, we, we normally have like uh, one or two hour sessions. Right now I'm doing them on my home, at my home. So I put these workbooks together from the work that I've done over the past three years from Facebook. So a lot of this material has come from that. And so uh, what I do now is I, I take this workbook and I work with uh, a few people to introduce them to FPS through this, uh, through this workbook. And I'm, I'm in the process of getting a copyright, uh, putting it all together. And I'm excited. I had shared with Michael that I did a fundraiser online. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Kickstarter. Or go find me on one of those type of you know, projects. Uh, but I, I I opened up a Kickstarter account. I put together the FPS communication thing, and I shared it with the members in the group. The, I had some great supporters, and um, I was able to raise uh, thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, and the Kickstarter went for like two months. And I was able to raise uh, thirteen hundred dollars to help me uh, put this all together, and that's just for people who believe in what I'm putting together so far. So I was very, I was nervous about doing it all, but I, I was pleased that it, that it, that it all, uh, in the end, it all seemed to work out. Now, on page twenty, we are going to. Rearrange these um, statements into FPS order, or just describe what order they that you might hear them in. Uh, for example, number one says, "I'm going bananas. I'm going to punch somebody's lights out. I'm tired of being a nice guy." This was something <laughs> one of my members said that in the group. So I took what he said and I analyzed each sentence, and for me. Where it says, I am tired of being a nice guy, tired is the emotion. The problem is, he's going bananas. And his version of a solution is he's going to punch somebody's lights out. So you see, what I do in the group is I get people to observe their current structure on communicating, like how they put their words. And most of the time, when a person comes to the group and the event, they never start off owning that emotion. Uh, they always go either to the problem or the solution. So number one would be PSF, for example. Uh, number two, who wants to give that a try? I feel stressed out. I feel stressed out. Feeling. The problem is I'm unable 